G'day, I'm Fieldsy, and today we're talking about adventure bikes for short asses. All right, so adventure bikes are fun. Everyone knows that. Well, if you're watching this channel, you know that. I hope you know that, but they're big. Adventure bikes are big, and by the nature of them, they tend to be tall, they're big bikes. But does that mean they're out of reach for everyone? Not really, not quite. Before I get started though, I want to tell you a few things. Seat height isn't the whole story. You also have to take into account the shape of the seat, so a wider seat makes it harder to reach the ground. Also, you've got to take into account SAG. There's a really good website that takes some of this into account. I'll link to that below. But it's, seat height isn't the whole story. The other misconception that a lot of, especially newer riders have, is that they have to be able to touch the ground with both feet, well, flat-footed even. Now, I haven't been able to flat-foot a bike for years. It's really not a problem. You don't really have to be able to flat-foot the bike. There's all sorts of things you can do from, you know, you slide off the side of the seat a little bit, pay attention to where you stop. There are going to be times when you pull up and you happen to be a be over a hole or something like that. You go to put your foot down and the bike goes over. That's just life. That's just adventure riding. But don't be thinking you have to be able to flat foot your bike. The other option you have is lowering links and lower seats. Now, lowering links, I mean, they're not completely out of the question. They can open up a can of worms, though, because they do change the handling of the bike. They'll change the head angle. Even if you slide the forks up, you still might have some crazy things happen there. The other downside of it is you are lowering the ground clearance. These aren't always huge things, but they can be, and there's something to keep in mind. Personally, I think a better way to go is a lower seat. Uh, if you have to with these bikes, a lot of them, you can use lowering links and a lower seat. So it can be done, but also, like I said, try to remember you don't have to be able to flat foot a bike or even an adventure bike. It's not really necessary, but I mean, you gotta get the seat down. Some people do. So here we go, in no particular order. <laughs> these are my suggestions or my ideas and what I've found for adventure bikes for shorter people. The good old Suzuki V-Strom 650XT. It's got a seat height of 835 millimeters. It's been around for a while now. Uh, it's a it's a solid bike. People bag it out. It is more on the road side of things. Pretty much all these bikes are. But yeah, the V-Strom, it's got a great sounding motor. A lot of people have done some really epic things with these bikes. So yeah, they're definitely an option. The thing with the V-Strom is, is it does ride better than you might think. But it does seem big. It does seem like a big bike. They're 15 grand, brand new. So yeah, not a bad option at all. BMW 850GS. It's got a seat height of 815 millimeters with the OE lowering kit. Parallel twin, not a bad bike, made by the Germans. I mean, they know how to make an adventure bike. That's a pretty good option, 20 grand brand new. The BMW 750GS. It's a bit more road orientated than the A50. It's still the German bike. It's still good, but it is still 15 grand, which is, uh, it's a brand now, I and mean, it is European. It's pretty good quality, so it's, yeah, it's not a bad option at all. The Triumph 850 Tiger Sport. Now you can get that with the uh, factory kit at 810 millimeters. That triple cylinder motor. I used to think it sounded a bit weird, but it is growing on me. Again, it's got the 19 inch, 17 inch alloy wheel combo. Personally, it's 18 grand. I'd spend the extra two grand and get a Triumph Tiger 900 GT Low. Near enough to 100 horsepower. It's got that triple motor in it. It still has the 1917 inch wheel combo. It's 20 grand, so it's only two grand more than the 850. Personally, I'd pony up with the extra two grand. Probably sell a kidney or something, I don't know. But hey, what do I need kidneys for? Now this one surprised me a little bit. You can get the Triumph 1200 GT Low at 790 millimeters. So there are bigger adventure bikes that you can get, but at 30 grand, she ain't cheap. Going back the other way now, we've got the Honda CB500X. It's had a bit of a revamp this year. It also got a little bit higher. The current model has a seat height of 834 millimeters. If you get the older one, it's got 810. Yeah, it's an underrated bike. Mind you, everybody seems to keep saying that, so maybe it's not so underrated. But yeah, it's a little bike. It's pretty good. It does its job, and it's under 10 grand brand new. It's time for me to do the standard plug. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe. I'm desperate. <laughs> there it is, I gotta do it. The Kawasaki Versys 300X. Got a seat height of 815 millimeters. It's not a bad little bike. It's got spoke wheels, so that's cool. It handles off-road a bit better than you might think. Uh, I would like to see it get updated to 400 cc's. That motor has been around for yonks in one form or another. 
It really does remind me of the motor of my 1992 ZZR 250. No, I didn't have parachute pants. Maybe. Seven grand will get you a Versys 300X. Yeah, I don't mind them, they're not bad. The Royal Enfield Himalayan. Wow, okay, it's kinda weird, kinda old school, kinda had a reputation for breaking frames. I mean, in their promo video, a foot peg got broken off by a Dakar rider, but I mean, yeah. I mean, that's the Enfield. Some people love them. They're a, a bit of a different bike. They're an adventure bike. They will take you places. They will travel. I think the newer ones are a little bit better than the older ones. I don't think they've uh, had the frame problems that the older ones I had. But yeah, it's definitely an option, 800 mil. And it's eight and a half grand, if you like that sort of thing. The Benelli TRK 500. It's got a seat height of 800 millimeters. Okay, important now, I didn't realize this until I was researching this video, but if you go the 502X, it's got a seat height of 850 millimeters. If you go the 502, it's got 800 millimeters. So there is a height difference, keep that in mind. Now that bike, it feels huge. Honestly, I feel like it's, I feel like it's physically bigger than it has to be. It does feel like a mini GS1200. It feels really fat in the front. Um, I'm hearing good reports about it. Uh, people who have them seem to really like them. I haven't got to ride one yet. I'll have to get around to doing that. But uh, yeah, it's an option, 800 mil seat height. Mind you, it's nine and a half grand and it is made in China. So just be aware of that, know that. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I mean, you're paying nine and a half grand for a China bike. Let's be honest, that's what you're doing. Now, if you look around, yet yeah, there's other options. One I've found, and it's not in production now, is the Triumph Tiger 800 XCX Low. So what makes the uh, Triumph Tiger 800 XCX Low so good? Well, it's got the magic 21 17 inch wheel combo. It's got spoke wheels. It's got WP suspension. It's also got a 19 litre fuel tank. So you're looking at a genuinely off-road capable adventure bike that a shorter rider can get onto. I believe the uh, latest incarnation or the last incarnation of that bike had a seat height of 790 millimetres. I reckon that's a bit of a bit of a golden spot, this bike. Unfortunately, because you know the zombie apocalypse and everything else, they're still going for 15 grand. Uh, they seem like really good bikes, really interesting. And I do believe that Safari actually make a bigger fuel tank for it too, if you want to go that way. Some of the older BMW Thumper adventure bikes came in some pretty low seat heights too. A lot of them, actually a lot of them or all of them, I'm not sure, had the Rotex Thumper motors in them. I've never really heard anyone say anything bad about them, to be honest. I used to ride with a guy who had one. Uh, they seem like a pretty good bike to me. They really do. But like everything else at the moment with the zombie apocalypse, that COVID tax, they're uh, pretty expensive. Can be a bit hard to find. But some guys have done some massive, massive trips with these things and they're a quality bit of gear. They honestly are. A little bit um, underrated, I guess. Probably not as exciting as some bikes around. But yeah, I think it's a solid choice if you can find one and if that's what you're after. Another option might be some of the Scramblers, uh, getting bolt-on accessories could be a problem with those, but that could be an option. Although, some of them don't really have low seat heights, to be honest. Some of them are pretty up there, sort of 850 millimeters and that sort of thing. So, but it is an option. It's not something I've looked into. Uh, it could be done though. I mean, people have ridden bicycles around the world, so I think we get a bit carried away with this stuff sometimes, but hey. But like I said before, flat footing a bike isn't necessary. It's probably nice. Um, I haven't been able to do it in a long time. It's hard for newer riders to hear. I know it is. I know it's hard to have the confidence. I know it's intimidating when you've got a tip tail bike. But honestly, a lot of us do it. A lot of us experienced riders, we can't flat foot our bikes. Uh, my sort of point of view is if I can flat foot a bike, then I've given up ground clearance to be able to do that. And as well as suspension travel, also on my bike, my Africa Twin, it's got uh, two height settings for the seat. I have it on high, even though I'm on tiptoes on the ground, just because it makes standing up on the pegs and getting down a little bit easier. Just changes that angle of your legs a little bit more and it makes a difference after a couple of days of riding the bike, it really does. You know what, at the end of the day, you use these seat heights and these bikes as a starting point. There are lowering links out there. There are lower seats out there. But practice and a total disregard for your own safety, that's free. In Australia it is, because we've got free medical. And we won both world wars. We haven't got to the moon yet though.